In today's video, how does a person tell if they have good or bad genetics? Hey guys, what's going on? Happy Monday. Welcome back and let's talk about today's question, which is how do you tell if you have good or bad genetics? Now, the question comes from my Instagram direct message, which I'll put on the screen here. And if you like this type of content where I answer your questions, we talk about nutrition, training, how to build muscle, how to lose fat, how to get stronger, how to live the best possible life. Well, hit subscribe because that's what I love to do here. So I'm going to start by reading today's question and then we're going to go over just how it is you tell if you have good or bad genetics. I know genetics play a huge role in the kind of progress we make, but how does a person know if they have good or bad genetics? So I want to talk first about looking at the obvious telltale signs around us. Now, first of all, we have to discuss what would make someone's genetics good or bad. So if it comes to playing in the NBA, do you have the potential to be tall? That would be good genetics. However, if you want the potential to be the best power lifter in the world, being tall would be bad genetics. So a lot of this discussion on good or bad genetics just comes down to your perceptions. As with a lot of things, a lot of it's what's happening between our ears. How do we perceive things? And genetics is not something that we can currently control. So if you're spending a lot of time worrying about, do I have the genetics to do something and not just putting in the work to find out, well, then you're already taking a step back. These are not things that we could currently control. Okay. Can't make ourselves taller. Can't change the type of muscle we have. Okay. So let's talk about how we can figure out just how important genetics is. And I always like to go to a little bit of research and discuss that based on a few studies I found, which I'll link below. I'd like to read a little bit about just how much muscle is genetic. Now muscle is highly heritable. It ranges from 30 to 85% for strength and 50 to 80% for lean mass. So what does that tell us? Those are huge ranges, but they are ranges. And the one thing I like to always kind of compare to, there is an insane variation in the human condition as a whole. But when it comes to things like muscle and strength and performance, sometimes those conditions aren't clear. Yes, we all know people that when they were young, just looked more muscular, had more natural lean body mass, even perhaps without exercising than the rest of us, right? We remember those kids that just kind of stood out in a crowd, but we also remember the guys or the girls who were perhaps tall and lanky, who were very thin, who just through perseverance were able to change the way that they looked and almost it would appear change their genetics only through putting in the work. Can you actually find out? Now, when it comes to building muscle, there are things that we can look at, things like levers, things like muscle insertions, but even some of those don't really become apparent and clear until we get in the gym, put on some muscle, train, and see what we look like because we all have the potential to put on muscle. How quickly and how much? Well, that's obviously going to be tied to our genetics. And I have had the benefit of working with many, many people, probably on both ends of the spectrum. And I'll highlight a couple of them here. So last year I had two clients compete that I would consider probably some of the more genetic elite type of people. So Brian DaCosta is a natural bodybuilder and I'll put some footage of him here. He came to Tampa. He, uh, he came with me to the Yorton cup. I went out and, uh, watched him compete in Sacramento as his coach. And as you see here in the video, Brian carries an insane amount of lean body mass walking around at five, nine, 200 pounds lean with a ton of muscle. He can fluctuate a few pounds within that range and still be extremely strong and extremely dense. Now, this is a genetic makeup of Brian who told me when he was young, he was able to put on muscle very easily. However, if he had never experimented and never found out about the sport, or gotten more serious about his nutrition and training, he would not have reached the place that he did last year where we actually earned him a natural pro bodybuilding card and competed at the OCB world championships. Likewise, De Raja Hill has been a client of mine for a few years now. 
And within a very short amount of time, she has taken a physique, which I'll show you here, from something that looks very nice to something that now resembles a genetic anomaly. Okay, she, she has a insane structure, has a lot of muscle, stays lean, and is just someone that is designed for the sport that she's in. Although she initially started playing tennis, where maybe her genetics were not great for, well, she found that she had a genetic greatness in something specific. And that's what I want to encourage, is the idea that we explore these opportunities, explore these things, because you might not have great genetics for building muscle, but what I have found is the people that really work the hardest at learning to get the most out of their physique, well, they are the ones that go on to study, get their master's degrees, get their PhDs, write books, leaders of industry in the fitness industry who are changing the way we look at things because they've had to learn to get the most out of their physique. They didn't simply say, well, you know what? Based on everything I see around my family and my first year in training, I don't have good genetics for this process, so I'm just gonna do something else. So if it's something that you're truly passionate about, I think that's the most important thing. Don't let this thought that you might not have the best genetics dictate exactly what you're gonna do. One final note when it comes to this would be the idea that they are now studying something called epigenetics. And that is the idea that we can change the way our genes are expressed through our offspring, our children, our grandchildren. The lifestyles we lead are going to possibly impact them in a positive or a negative way. And so this research, it's very exciting because no longer does leading a healthy lifestyle have to do just with us. You can be positively impacting your family line for generations. And as someone who's been around watching sports for many years, I can't help but think of one example, a major league baseball player by the name of Ken Griffey, who was a fixture on a very popular Cincinnati Reds team in the 1970s. He was a very good player. In fact, he was an all-star for a few years. But years later, when his son was born, he took the sport by storm. Now, he was raised under the right conditions and he had the right genetic code. But I got to imagine the fact that his father was a major league baseball player when he was conceived had something to do with the fact that he would basically go on to be one of the all-time greats. In fact, they are the only father-son duo to hit a home run in the same game. That's right, Ken Griffey was a major league baseball player at 19 years of age. So these type of things have always been very intriguing to me. And even though now I have my own children, I'll be interested to see how the changes in my life will impact them. So it's not just about genetics and what is possible, because that is something that we're still learning a lot about. In identifying genetic contributors to muscle and strength, there's not a lot that's currently known. They're still exploring these ideas. And as science kind of catches up with our curiosity, I'm sure we'll find out more. But one thing we can't change is our genetics. So whether you're tall, whether you're short, whether you're a little heavy set, or whether you wake up and just have a ton of muscle and look awesome, you still can be better, the best version of yourself. And that's all I want you guys to do. And hopefully this video helps you with your mindset. So go kick some ass, guys. Have a great week ahead, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.